Good. Well, thank you. Thank you everyone for, for being here with us. This is our first public session of the mentorship project, Learning Tokens at Hyperledger Bessie. Um, it is a pleasure for me to introduce Tanzin Alam. He is the mentee for 2023. He is from Accra in Bangladesh. And uh, we've been working together very happily. I think, I wonder what, what he thinks. <laughs> no, but I am very happy working with him you know, since the past um, five, five weeks. We're going, we have weekly meetings to, to advance the mentorship. And we are going to have every four weeks a public session so that anyone interested in, in learning tokens can participate in a dialogue that would definitely enrich the notion of this learning tokens and the possibilities of uh, applying them in, in a learning context. So without uh, further ado, Benzin, let me give you the chance to share this, your screen. There you have it. And, yeah, hello. And we'll, we'll start. Uh, I'd like to thank the people who have joined. Uh, yeah, so I'll start the meeting by uh, sharing his presentation slide. So we'll probably go through what we are trying to do and what we have done. So it might give you a total understanding what learning token is and how it is, how are you going to use. Is it visible? It is. Yeah. So this is our first public session. And as per Alphonse said, we'll probably have uh, one after, for, after four weeks. Okay. So, so here we can see, so we have uh, uh, considered the scenario for two platforms. But, uh, for say, uh, the, from the le left hand, we can see YouTube and internet. On the right side, we can see the MOOCs. So uh, for instance, you can, uh, uh, you can consider uh, there are lots of YouTube channels and many uh, with lots of tutorials. So, so all the channels who, who are just giving uh, um, many uh, ideas or, uh, or knowledge to a, a learner. So this thing is like uh, happening to uh, one-way interaction. So you can see the instructor is giving some content to the learner. On the right-hand side, what we have, we're trying to uh, 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 give the insight that uh, for example, you can consider the right side is for the MOOCs uh, for the platform like uh, Coursera or edX. So, so in that case, instructor not only giving uh, content but also giving some assessment as well. So, uh, so the learner can also submit those assessment and uh, this communication is uh, both side actually. So this is what we are trying to say uh, from this picture and moving on so so from the learner what 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 his uh, ultimate pur purpose is to have some skills so we can see the learner uh, will have uh, looking for forward for some skills and those skills is uh, earned by by some content yeah and we can also see this the, the skills is uh, uh, recursively connected to itself and why? Because we know uh, like two or three skills is requires for one skills, which is represent itself as skill. And uh, this and this is skills is required for the for the learner's career. So this is what we are trying to like uh, uh, figure out from this slide. And moving on this slide, uh, I guess it's a uh, uh, must not visible, but uh, no worries. We have not discuss. This is the taxonomy of skills. So, so we have basically 
two things here education 4.0 and uh, another is like the uh, the global skill taxonomy so from here we can see the education 4.0 uh, the, uh, the abilities and skills which has some uh, uh, subsections about the cognitive and analysis and which probably under, under the problem solving or the system analysis and uh, this is what we're trying to like uh, group, uh, making a table to group those, those things and and the next one is like the global skill taxonomy so we can see the same things here, like which and which one is under which one, and this is it. Moving on, so this is this is representing the same things. So here we can see the knowledge graph of the skills. So how it works. So let's consider an institution. Institution has an instructor. So what does this instructor will do? He will have a, a, like the content. So the those content is is the represent is the source of skills. As, as per I have said before, the skills is the parent of itself because lots of, there might be a lot of skill, it itself represents the skills. And this skill is required for the learner and also the goal of the learner throughout the course. And this skill is asked for like jobs. We need job, we, when we go to the jobs, we might need to show this what, kind of skill we have acquired through our, through our education. Yeah, and this is skill also is important for the career as well. And uh, this is uh, this one also uh, connected to the taxonomy. And we will uh, discuss taxonomy uh, uh, more detail later. So here we can see like the type of the learning token that we have figured out we are going to uh, use for this. So, as I have told you previously, the left side you can see this might be a YouTube or might be an internet platform. On the right hand side we can see this might be a, a physical world where the instructor is uh, grading uh, grading a student, and and here we can see this uh, the student is also helping other student, which one is representing here, so he helping things. And the instructor can uh, grade a student, uh, uh, grade students uh, uh, throughout his course. And these things will be incentivized with the tokens that we have mentioned here, the non fungible tokens for attendance. Since the YouTube, from YouTube, there is no both way interaction, uh, there is only one way, like uh, there might be a a workshop going on so we need to just make sure that the someone the x person has joined the uh, workshop or not this is what we are trying to represent here so the learner will join a youtube session these things and this on the right side will we we can instructor can grade a student and the student can also help other student with the tokens Moving on, so uh, this taxonomy with skills and how it works like that. See, the inst institution has, has instructor and the, the work of instructor is like to create codes, write contents and, and have assessment for the learner and scoring. So this is what we are representing here. And ultimately the learner will get a certificate. So we can see uh, this from here. Apart from these things, we have uh, added the scoring guide here and the learning token. Now the learning token here. The learning token is the source of truth of the registry. And registry is like the, uh, the institution, instructor, course skill, learner access to jobs. So we can see the instructor is like creating codes, contents, and et cetera for the student and the student is being uh, assisted by the instructor. And these things will uh, happen. And uh, as for the source of truth, and we can just uh, make sure that those those things uh, are uh, from the uh, legitimate source and we can make those things in a learning token and, and we can pass this to the learner so that the learner can have it for lifetime and uh, and uh, use those things. 
for the jobs or their career. So this is where they will have the skill profile and those things will be here. So this is the same thing, what we have, uh, we are trying to fo focus. So the things is like the, the, the learner will have an, uh, a wallet. So this wallet will uh, uh, just uh, uh, store all the certificate as the learning token as the, and the skills. So if we see like uh, uh, like we have mentioned the the interaction between the number like one two three and 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 so on. So this is the ultimate thing what we are trying to achieve. Instructor create a course. Instructor define its content. Instructor define an assessment the schooling guide and learner registered for a course, learner learn, it from, learn from the content and the assessment are present to the learner. Learner responds the assessments, assessment are evaluated, learn gets, learner gets certificate. <laughs> as, as we have defined here. The instructor tokenized source guide, yeah. The instructor uh, registered for the learning tokens and this is it actually the course skill registered for the learning token learner the learner registered for the learning token job registered for the learning token and register also create the source of truth for the institution and the token are given to the instructor because like since uh, uh, because for under each instructor there might be a lot of uh, learners so the token will be given to the learner and later on the learner uh, the token uh, will use by the instructor to incentivize all the learner. And here we can see, uh, basically uh, we are focusing on three things uh, as we have discussed previously, the attendance, school and helping thing. So attendance, for the attendance, we'll have uh, the skill ID, date issued, institution ID, instructor ID and course ID. So it so that each time we can uh, uh, figure out uh, from which institution by which instructor to to whom uh, a learner get a token. So this is the property we must need to have for for the learning token for the attendance score and helping token so that uh, we can figure it out. So this was, this was like the, the presentation about the learning token. Uh, do, uh, do anyone have any question to ask? We have, we have also another part, which is the code that has been uh, advanced. Okay. Mm -hmm. But before going into that, I think it's, it's a good, time to to talk about what you think and the questions that you might have Elizabeth and, and, and Josh we have thought of this in a granular fashion certificates already are being uh, given and registered in blockchain but certificates are for the complete course and certificates have to be paid for. Although the course is free and it is in the interactions of the course that the learner gets skills. So learning tokens are for the granular interactions measured by a scoring guide defined by the instructor. And those granular measurements go directly to a skills wallet or a profile of skills. Why are we doing this? Because it's a way for many people who attend courses and do not have the resources to pay for a certificate. Certificates are, are not expensive in, in the developed world as we used to say, the global south, as it is called now. Um, for many of us are expensive, certificates are expensive. 
And so the registry of skills acquired is lost on the hand of the learner. On the hand of the instructor, the instructor is missing all the data, all the granular data of, of the uh, learning and teaching process. So I think that using the existing idea of the score guide for assessment and using the idea of attendance for, for you two, uh, there is a way of recognizing, registering, and, and rewarding the interactions for the acquisition of skills. I talk too much, so I, I, <laughs> I shut up now. Yeah, even, yeah. What, what even like, think? Yeah, even like, as you, as you were telling, like um, many, many, uh, like why we need this. Um, and uh, I see uh, from the other side, like uh, if someone claims that I have done this course previously, so nowadays it's all about like an and uh, image like this is a certificate that I have done this course and uh, uh, we cannot like uh, uh, verify this thing is he have done it or not so if we can just implement this one so that we can send them a, send a user's wallet a certificate as an NFT as we as we have discussed, so we can also uh, uh, then verify and uh, verify and sh make sure that he is a he has actually done this course and uh, and uh, from the metadata we will we may find also how many uh, assessment work he has done and uh, and many more things like like the helping things like uh, the helping token so. So how does he he, he help the, the community? So we can also figure those things out when we'll able to implement this thing. So um, can I speak? Uh, Please do. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, last year, I remember I went to a Web3 conference only. There was um, something, a company was was proposing like uh, they were giving you like an avatar as an nft and it would uh, develop it will upgrade itself as you went on learning as you went on uh, uh, doing more and more courses like something like that i don't remember it, uh, it correctly i guess but um, i saw that and it would be great like if you can add something more interactive in it would be more better experience for the user. Yes, you're, you're right. Um, this is a short period. The mentorship is only um, five months. Okay, I'm almost six, but it, it is a short period. And we've decided Last year, we concentrated on the uh, um, semantic description. We used the token to sum the framework, the Interwork Alliance, Global Blockchain Business Council, all that. And we're working on it. Uh, this year, we want to do three things. We want to build the tokens. And that's why in this session, we would like to do, have uh, feedback from you. Then second part, we're, we're, we will learn and contact MOOCs, learn about MOOCs, and see how they process interactions now. And the third, very short and last part, is to have a pilot project, either in an institution uh, in Accra, near, near Tanzin, no, or maybe with someone from the hyperledger community, okay? What you're talking about is extremely important and it's, it's to facilitate the interaction. Now, and in MOOCs, that, those interactions are pre-established, okay? In free format uh, events, like conferences and like uh, 
repositories like YouTube. You know, uh, those interactions are either too limited, as in YouTube, or too open. You know? We won't be looking into those now, but your suggestion is extremely valuable. And we definitely, once we have the tokens, okay, then we can start working with, with the interaction. The only example that I know of a granular registry of interactions for courses um, is held by the Department of Defense of the United States of America. I mean, those guys have for any course of the Army, Air Force, Navy. You know, they register everything in between the beginning and the end. You know, but uh, we haven't. I'm very honest. We haven't done the research beyond that first example. If you have suggestions, if you want to take that as as a personal interest, Learning Tokens Lab is open. Yeah, um, that uh, that's great. Yeah, I think I went out of uh, your what you are trying to do right now. I was just suggesting. I just remembered something I heard before, so I gave you my uh, request. Some suggestions. It's very good. It's a very good suggestion. It it is in the interactions, exactly in the interactions where we are measuring and and giving tokens. How to make those interactions better? It's 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 of interest. Thank you for for your suggestion. Yeah, yes, like uh, you, uh, what you have said, that is really important. But the, yeah, as as Alphas Alphas was saying, so since we are focusing very granular way, in 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 a deeper way, so the what the problem we are facing basically, uh, since uh, we want to make it in, in a generic way, so that the ad adoption can come globally. I guess this is what uh, this is uh, one topic we need to uh, keep keep in concern uh, because like uh, like see like in, in India or in Pakistan or in USA the grading system are not same even the education system even are not same so how we are going to uh, implement uh, this learning token in a generic way so that everyone can use it for the MOOCs or for POs folks. And uh, this is why actually we are uh, trying to do it uh, in a minimal minimal way so that we can just start it initially. And later on, we may add the things as you have said. Elizabeth. What do you think? You're, you're always a very keen participant. And oh. you, you, have, you have your view, you have a scientific- Thank you. I mean, you know, what's really running through my mind as I listen is that there are deep fakes. Uh, there are so many ways people, I mean, there's crime is just amazing. We need to, um, you know, prevent all of those things from happening. And I, I see, of course, blockchain is an excellent uh, choice. I just um, kind of like to hear how you're going to prevent the theft that, you know, somebody else getting there first or. or you you want to kind of... you want to jump into that, Tanzin? How do learning tokens take care of possible uh, yeah. fraud? So you were telling about the deep fake, like the artificial intelligence things, like someone, like someone just uh, giving the proxy, uh, what it say, uh, for like even Coursera or some other platform. If they have, they, they give us the like assessment things, but they don't uh, take the assessment in in video conferencing way. So it is just like we do the stuff and just upload it. So. Yeah, uh, the point you have mentioned 
that that is a, a concerning fact for maybe later but right now i uh, right now i don't think like that the deep fake uh, for the educational platform like coursera edx uh, they are uh, uh, still uh, aware of this but uh, we can fight with uh, we can prevent this and how if i say like uh, uh, we can do this basically I, I don't know have you heard about the world coin or not so this is a another project from Sam Altman is just doing. So he is this this if I say about this project uh, in a very short. So it, it's it's all about making making sure each each people in the globe have only one wallet, and this wallet is uh, also make sure that uh, that uh, that. This wallet is connected to one entity at the same time, and uh, so that like yeah, so that no one can uh, giving the proxy things or claim uh, claim same thing twice with the multiple wa multiple wallets. So yeah, so uh, we can but we can uh, uh, fight these things uh, if, if when we were done with the learning token. And for the time being, if I might uh, add, Kanzin, for the mm -hmm. time being, Elizabeth, uh, we are following the approach of verifiable credentials. As we showed in the graph, you know, we let any institution in structure, so basically the institution that wants to give the tokens, they are the ultimate source of proof. So it's by the prestige of that institution and the structure and the course that that source of proof is established. Now, the learner is registered and the learner should have a unique SSI, self-sovereign identity. So we are taking those concepts because what we're offering now is just the coin, just the way, the token, the way of measuring, registering and measuring and rewarding. You know, we are thinking that the institutions, the learners, as in verifiable credentials, credentials take, take care of, of, of those issues. But it would be very interesting to see if in the token themselves we could um, include some some compliance i listened yesterday when well, we listened um, that there is a new kind of token that has within its smart contract the possibility of verify and comply with local reg regulations. It's used in the financial world. And so the operation of the smart contract takes care of the compliance in a regulatory framework. But it's, we're small, we're at the beginning, we have little time. And the good thing of it is we have to concentrate, but be open to all to all suggestions. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to see Hyperledger use this and give people tokens for attending the meetings and providing feedback and providing code, et cetera. And then eventually have a maybe one of the companies that has benefited, profited off of a Hyperledger system to make the contributions and make the tokens valuable so that they can uh, actually get compensated and maybe can get compensated for code for contributing code over that would be that's that's a great idea the, the code contribution is it, it's a great great idea uh, Elizabeth I checked with uh, uh, Bobby Muscara is interested you know and she manifested so to to be one of the pilot projects with the course 
that she has written and it's about to come up in, in edits. Um, I also talked to, to Daniela Barbosa, you know, and she explained to me that the certificates that Hyperledger Foundation gives for all its courses are outsourced. They are outsourced to, to, to a company. And she said, well, it would be very nice to see what you guys come up with so that we can uh, explore, test, and that's plenty of work for for the future, Tanzin. Yeah. But the code issue is, I think it's 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 a great great idea. In all of these cases, from YouTube to MOOCs to to code, the important part for us is. How did you evaluate whom to give the tokens to? What is the procedure that has to be assessed, complied with, sold, so that a valid, not a deep fake um, recognition is, is, is given? We call it the scoring guide because we are, we're using the traditional whether it's debatable, but we're using the traditional grading system, you know, and there's plenty of work to do in that, in, within that tradition. But how do you evaluate whom to give the token to? How many? Uh, that's, that's a fundamental, that's a fundamental issue. And requiring one wallet, they would have their wallet registered with a court, and that would be the one wallet. And I guess the court system would have a way to make sure that there's the same person isn't registering more than one wallet. That's correct. That's also that's I'm... also very very important because here, as opposed to some other coins, tokens, and, and businesses, here isn't the benefit of of the learner to have all the tokens in one place because that is their, their profile of skills. And that's what, what uh, the employers or partners or uh, venture capital funders, what, what have you, that's what they would be looking at. That's and it would have to keep up your address with the court or how however you keep up your address so that when the um, the recruiter does pick you, then then they contact you. It's actually you who is getting their call and not somebody who's. You know, I, I know that it's really hard to tamper with court records as well, so they would have that sort of paper trail to back up, uh, fall back on. And using yes, you're correct. And using the principles of verifiable credentials and zero knowledge proof then that wallet would give the holder of the wallet the right to show what they want to show and to keep in private what they want to do so. You want to go through the code quickly? Uh, yeah. in, or uh, Before I go there, I just like to share the Discord channel. So we have sure. just created it. Sure. You can find it from the chat. So we have just created a, a channel from, from in the Hyperlizard Foundation Discord. So we will make sure it, the the channel is updated with the latest information. And uh, I hope you guys will just uh, uh, will be there. So. If you like to share anything or have any idea or ask any question, you can just drop off of there. So let me join another PC. Thank you, Tanjin. I want to recognize 
um, cash and the rest of it, the enormous expertise of the 32 applicants for, for this mentorship project. It was very hard to select one. And that's why we have the Learning Tokens Lab and why we have these meetings. Because anyone that wanted to and want to participate can do so. I'm very much impressed by by the level of of, of this cohort. They're incredibly wiser than than the mentor, and that's what I'm thanking them for for mentoring me. Uh, I guess you can see skin I have shared. So, so, so far we have figure, figured out the implementation of uh, the attendance actually. Ignore the name. So, so let's go through it, what we have done here. Uh, so the way we have designed is uh, we'll, uh, uh, we will create programs. So the program will be created by uh, an instructor. So before going to the program, let us see what else function we have. So we have registered learner, register instructor, and register for program. And let's see what else. Uh, so if we start from the beginning, so an institution will come and request to get registered first of all. So, it's lost because it is a lot of function. Yeah, this one. So we can see register institution. So for registering an institution, what we will need. So we have assumed we'll we'll need a name for the for the institution, and the institution will definitely will have a wallet. So let us consider. Institution. Let us consider our institution will be being have re made a request and we play MIT and this is their uh, wallet address. So the institution have been registered. So within that that institution, uh, the institution can uh, create instructor. So I have made it there. Register instructor. In instructor. You can see register uh, register instructor function. This function can only be called by only institution. Then, so the only the registered institution can register their instructor. So here, all the instructor will get registered. I will not go through all, all the function I, because there are a lot of functions and uh, I'm still working on it. So I'll just just go through how the function stands, for the, what the function are doing, and, and and so on. So let's 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 go with that. So after the institution institution being registered, the institution will uh, make sure uh, it registered all its instruct instructor. 
after the first say, uh, the first say one instructor instructor have been registered. Now, now the instructor will create programs. So what the program stands. So the programs basically for the courses, like uh, it it might happen that uh, uh, X instructor is taking uh, a CSC course. So this is what he will do. He will give a name, so basically a program or course name, like like CS fifty, and the time uh, the when the program was created and the total supply. What is the total supply here? The total supply is he will uh, initially assume like uh, he he has like uh, hundred students, so he will mint hundred token for sale, and uh, and and we have designed the smart contract in such a way that later on he can uh, also burn and mint new token under the program. And why it was needed? Because uh, it might happen that later on some uh, new student join the program or some students just drop out the program. So, so this is why we needed this one. And for that thing, Yeah, so so we can see uh, we have all uh, barn roll and mint roll function so that we can revoke the uh, permission of uh, uh, someone who has the permission to burn or mint uh, the tokens under the program. So we have uh, also function to add someone as a Burn roll man, for burning uh, tokens and for minting tokens. So basically, I guess I have covered the most of the function, and this all the the uh, basically uh, the function to check either like uh, am I being like like let's say. Like we have a function to check. Check is a is someone is registered for a specific course or not. Like if then might it might happen that if someone can just call that like uh, am I am I being registered because I'm not I'm not having the attendance token so that he can invoke this function and check like yeah I since I I have joined the program and I'm not getting any attendance token so let's uh, let's give a try and check have I been joined or not? And later on, he might con uh, con connect with his uh, instructor and claim that. And, and to be honest, uh, I'm still working on it. Uh, uh, the crucial part, actually, yeah. the authentication part, best, uh, authentication part, because uh, what I am uh, feeling right now, uh, like the roles actually it's basically so, uh, the roles is for like uh, let's say uh, an institution has uh, uh, have created 10 instructor and under 10 instructor there are 10 programs and uh, the, under under those 10 10 program there will be like a lot of students joining there so so I need to uh, separate the authentication in such a way that uh, no one get overlapped or 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 say like uh, uh, an instructor can mint an another instructor token. So I need to just separate all those things so that uh, this thing just doesn't happen. So I'm working on that side right now, and it, it is. Uh, uh, I'm facing some problem, facing some difficulties to handle those things there. But but you've done an excellent work, and as Min you uh, told us, we are at the uh, one first quarter of of our 
of yeah. our program. So I, I look forward to a lot of very, very interesting things done with, with your help. We are reaching the, the end of the hour. If there's any additional comment that, that you want to, to share with us. If it's not, um, the presentation would be in the Learning Tokens lab, together with the, the recording. Elizabeth, help me. What, what do I do now that we end? What do I do with the recording? Would it be in my computer? Uh, yeah, ask, ask somebody else. Oh, I, I thought you knew. Sorry. For okay. Well, now I, I, what I've heard, I have not actually checked to see if this is true. Okay. Is that um, it will eventually show up on the the wiki page under recordings in uh, for your group. Oh, but this is I, not I, this is not a link from from Hyperledger. For, oh. for th this one, it's it's a it's a, a personal uh, link of mine. That's what I was having difficulty. But I, I see that yeah. I see that you know Tanzin. Yeah. Okay. Good. So it would be there is a hyperledger lab for um, learning tokens, and there's also the project in the mentorship um, list of projects, and we shall upload there the the slides from the presentation and and this recording. And you're most welcome to to the uh, Discord channel. Within it's within the Hyperledger Discord channel. And and thank you, Gash, for 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 your comment. So, and I'm glad to hear that you like it. Okay. Thank you, and it's excellent. I'm really happy to see the all of the work that you've done, especially the part where you're showing that it's a virtue. Uh, environmental stewardship, civic responsibility, et cetera. Uh, those are things that people need to learn. It needs to be part of a basic curriculum in, in schools. Thank you for- No, th uh, thank you. Thank you for, for your participation. Uh, it really helped us a lot. Okay. Yeah. And so we'll see you in, in, you're invited to come in four weeks. You know, um, I'll, I'll tease Tanzin <laughs> every week or sometimes <laughs> twice or, or thrice a week, you know, but uh, yeah. it's, it's been a great job. Thank you very much, Tanzin, for all you've done. Thanks for you for your attendance and have a great rest of the week and, and weekend. Thank you all for participating. Take care. Good. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.